John you know, had written the song, John had also brought Shirley Bassey into the equation. told people, wow, this is going to be an experience. I think everybody who saw the, the Bond films to begin with were knocked sideways by the, not just the film itself, but the music. I mean, the music was terrific. always a character who has to appear calm and cool and collected so it's really the way that the audience can get an insight into Bond's emotions is through the music John was part of the DNA of the James Bond films if you don't have the right music when you're going through an action sequence you don't know you know, it, it, it's the thing that, that takes you through and says, okay, this is now the moment I've got to do something really dangerous. And John was really great at creating enormous tension in scenes. The Bond movie is action. He walks in, he takes a look, he hits somebody in the face. It is Mickey Mouse, what we call Mickey Mousing it. It goes with the action. It was a big canvas, a million dollar Mickey Mouse music. But it was very, very highly disciplined writing. Bon appetit. He always runs while others walk. Writing lyrics for John Barry, it's not as simple as just making the words fit. John is very much aware of the mood of the song. And uh, although the lyrics have to follow the contours and curves of his melody, he's very much aware of the mood. The same as he searches for a mood for a movie, he wants the words not just to fit, but to cover that same landscape as he has covered. You To this day, when people sit in the audience, when they hear that sound, which is the John Barry sound, they start to tingle. Diamonds are forever. They are all I need to please me. I remember very, very well when we uh, wrote Diamonds Are Forever, and we were very, very pleased with they it. Won't leave in the night. I remember saying to Don, just let's treat a diamond like it's a man's penis. Hold one up and then caress it. Touch it, stroke it and undress it. Harry Saltzman said, how can you write words like touch it, stroke it and undress it? It's too provocative, it's filthy. And I said, but Mr. Saltzman, you know. That was what was so fun about the bomb, because all that kind of innuendo and and stuff was all done in a, in, you know, in a larger-than-life kind of cartoon kind of fashion. If you think he, he wrote for the Bond, who was the big hero with the, the, the Aston Martin and all the girls and cocktails shaken but not stirred, and uh, Harry Palmer, who couldn't get a girl, wore glasses, did his own shopping, usually shook the milk to see whether it was sour or not. And John Barry had to represent that kind of a character. I used a cymbal, it's a lovely uh, Hungarian instrument. And I just love that solo sound.
in Ipcris file. You think I'm captured and taken away to some terrible, dangerous communist country in Eastern Europe somewhere. In actual fact, I was still in London, which is the whole trick of the movie. And his score helped the trick. His music helped the plot, forwarded the plot, but never got in the way of it. As the British film industry flourished in the 60s, London started to attract American movie makers. When Carl Foreman came over to produce Born Free, he chose Barry to score it. It was a most exciting time where we were all so busy doing movie after movie and song after song and advert after advert. A face without a trace of makeup proves it. A girl's most important cosmetic is her shampoo, her sun soak. I think There's John, like me, we still couldn't believe that we were actually in the eye of the storm that all this was happening to us. Barry never turned work down, and when he wasn't writing for movies, he also worked on television themes, mood music, and continued to run a record label. I was always a hard worker, but when I saw the way he went at it, he used to tear himself apart. It was a bit like, you know, to be an artist, you must suffer. And, but, but what happened with us is we were artists, and then we suffered, and then we went out. Of course, John was also the man about town. He had this beautiful white Citroen car, beautiful women. You know, he managed to get a lot into, uh, into his life. I don't know how he found time to write tunes anyway. No, he wasn't half as good as people talked. <laughs> he sounds a lot better in the telling. It was terrific. I mean, England opened up. It was a very healthy time to have been born into. The Lion in Winter is one of Barry's very best scores. Because it's a period piece, it demanded a specific kind of dramatic music. But because Barry chose to make it a choral score, as well as a fully symphonic score, I think surprised a lot of people in Hollywood and around the world. We had like a 120-piece orchestra and choir, and a 40-piece choir. And it was a great opportunity for me to do a choral, because I'd started off studying with Dr. Francis Jackson at York Minson. I'd studied choral music with him. Francis Jackson was the only teacher in York. He'd written a couple of symphonies himself. He was a master of music at York Minster. And I asked him if he'd teach me, you know, the rudiments of harmony and counterpoint. He taught organ and he taught piano, but he never actually taught musical theory. So he said, oh, that might be amusing. It's always difficult to assess the potentialities of a pupil, but I was pretty certain with, with John that he was uh, dedicated enough. Uh, he, he never said very much, so I couldn't really tell what was going on between those years. I wasn't crazy about teachers, you know, <laughs> a basic dislike for teachers so and, and and you were kind of extraordinary um in your attitude you might not know that but you, compared well, you with me. well you were you were you were very um um uh, very uh, understanding and um unhelpful believe it or not i mean it was it was a it, it was a, a different teaching ambiance that than i'd ever ever experienced before well, certainly. Really? Yes, absolutely. Oh, mm -hmm. that, well, that's a comfort because... <laughs> After all these years. I must confess I've never seen any of the films which he's written for, but I've heard the music by other means, and I'm astonished at his facility with melody and the way that uh, he's orchestrated everything. Mm -hmm. 